Hoppy, you were in the middle of explaining uh, pretty much the divide in the weekends where, you know, win one, lose one, or lose one, win one. Yeah, UMBC's been up and down, uh, as I was just stating, and then UMBC wants to use this weekend to keep building off what they had against Rowan. They played well against Rowan, start to finish, beat the number two, previously undefeated ranked team in the southeast, so uh, want to carry the momentum over from that. Keep playing well here. Maybe get some guys some offensive jump start that they've been missing, uh, especially guys on the lower end. Fritz, uh, Joel hasn't scored this year. Get some of those guys some points, some confidence going in tomorrow against William Patterson. Well, we'll have to wait and see how this weekend pans out as we were talking there about the difference between showing up one night versus another. So we're going to get a hold of uh, our tech guy within the rink and hopefully get a solid internet stream here because I've seen it cut down on bandwidth. So stay tuned, folks, and we appreciate your patience. So we're going to get our starting lineups here. Also defense number 22, Ronnie Caputo. <laughs> At left wing, number 9, Brad Cadigan. And yeah, Brad Cadigan starting there. As I get my roster ready to go here. Seven, Sim Allen. Sim Allen will start up there on the forward. At center, number 13, John Ryder. And John Ryder will start at center. And goal number 30, Connor Brogan. And Connor Brogan starting in net. And Coach Drew Townsend, Brad. We'll get our starting lineups, and then on the other side, we'll get the starting goaltenders stats. So here we go. Starting lineup for your UMBC Retrievers. Starting on defense, a senior from Detroit, Michigan, number seven, Nick Yost. Nick Yost, the captain, starting on defense. Also on defense, a freshman from Conway, Manchester, number 17, Matt Kelly. Matt Kelly will start on defense in Conway, New Hampshire. Dan Armstrong, Dapper Dan Armstrong. Dapper Dan. And right wing, a senior from Elkin City, Maryland, number nine, Dan Durante. Dan Durante, the ultimate captain, will start up on the other wing. From Elkin City, Maryland, number 12, Matt Bloom. Matt Bloom, the other alternate captain, another Elkin City na uh, native. Let's start up there in the center. And there he is, Trevor Miller, getting another start. Now we'll get the anthem and the opening face-off, along with the Tim Horton starting goaltenders. some hockey tonight's starting goaltenders brought to you by catch 22 design the official apparel of the umbc retrievers hockey team check it out at c22design.com who do we got starting mr hoppy sorry for georgetown we got number 30 connor brogan comes in with a record of three two and one uh two eight three goals against average and 89 percent save percentage quite solid for a team that's been uh below par compared to the rest of southeast and then for umbc we got trevor miller uh, he's got a 2-2 two and two record, starting his fifth straight game uh, with a 2-2-5 goals against average and 92 save percentage. There we go. Your starting goaltender is brought to you by Catch-22 Design. Once again, check them out at c22design.com and get your UMBC Retrievers ice hockey apparel. Here we go. Game one of two here at the Reiser Town Sportsplex. The Matt Bloom taking the face off. 
And OP1 back into the Georgetown zone. Chasing back is Dan Shea. Shea putting it along over to the far side and up along the far wing, up through center, intercepted and popped right back in by Kelly. Back to chase again is Shea. Shea will take it into the far corner up along the high glass and up to the blue line and bounces over Yost Stick. And trying to catch up with it was his counterpart, counterpart Sim Allen. And back the other way, it'll be Bloom chasing it off the far corner. Shea will go after it. A little support there from Armstrong. Armstrong will put it behind the net. Back there to get it is Dan Durante. Durante up top to the point to Rafferty. Rafferty winds up, takes a shot, deflected through. They scored! No, they're going to call it no goal. The high stick. Face off coming down all the way. Back into the retriever's zone. That one bounced around traffic there. And uh, even Armstrong's having a laugh there with the referee who was very emphatic about that no-go call. Well, he had the high stake and then went off the foot of Bloom before bouncing in. So probably could have called either one. Uh, called the high stake. Good call. Obviously, we don't like it. We'd like to be on the lead. 40 seconds in again. But uh, it's a good start for UMBC. Face off one back into the near corner inside the UMBC zone. Up to the blue line. Not out. Kept in by Georgetown. Oh uh, yes, working along the near circle, but it'll be the Retrievers trying to find it. And we're going to have a dogfight here for the puck, but eventually it's won by the Retrievers as O'Connor takes it across the line. Winding up, faking it, taking it to the slot, trying to take a shot, but there's going to be a hooking call coming up here to the Hoyas. We go on our first Green Turtle power play with 19.02 left here in the first. Green Turtle, visit them at 2 Restaurant Park Drive in Owings Mill, Maryland. See you at the Turtle. So... Sean O'Connor having a chance to cut to the front and try to release his shot, got caught up by the offending Hoya who was Ronnie Caputo. Caputo, they were joking about that in the bench next to me when they announced the starting lineup here. Yost putting the face off back up top. Over to O'Connor, back down low to Durante. O'Connor up top to Yost. Yost looking to take the shot, but he gets a pass over to Bloom with a shot and a save by Brogan. He comes over to the near side. And Hoy is trying to duck behind the goal line and move it around the opposite side, but it's stopped there by Durante. Durante putting it up top to Bloom. Bloom to Yost with a shot through traffic. Brogan to save the rebound. And trying to stuff it home was Thomas Nearing, but he couldn't find a way in. Up top, back to the blue line of Yost. Playing a little catch there with O'Connor. O'Connor trying to squeeze away from Shea. Puts it back up top to Yost. Yost through traffic with a shot. Brogan to save the rebound. It was juicy there for Nearing, but he'll have to pick it up along the far half boards. So it was kicked away by Lightkey. Down low, Durante looking for Lane here to pop it in there past Brogan, but it actually goes off the side of the net over to the near side, and the Hoyas will clear it out with Dan Walsh finding a lane and sending it all the way down to Trevor Miller. 105 left here on the Green Turtle power play. Really early on in this game, first look at special teams. Now Yost coming across the line, dropping it for Thomas Nearing. Nearing takes a shot and it just goes wide to Brogan. And it'll be picked up and sent down the length. Well, no, not the length of the ice. It'll actually find its way to the red line where O'Connor got in front of that clear. O'Connor regaining the zone, far side, getting taken into the boards by Allen. And it'll be picked up by Bloom over to the near side of Yost. Yost winds up, takes a shot, and Brogan making the save. The rebound goes off to the corner with a backhand try through to the front by O'Connor, but it'll be picked up by the Hoyas, and it'll be Ryder. That'll put it all the way down with the pass, with shorthanded with a backhand shot, and a save there as Sim Allen came in all alone, shorthanded. Another try up front, just goes wide of the net and off into the far corner. The Retrievers are going to break outside of their own zone. A couple of close calls there on their power play. So it's sent down low, and it's played by Jean-Luc Durante. Back behind the cage, Joe O'Connor. O'Connor, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon, that's Dak Tracy. Tracy back behind the cage, over to the far side half boards, and switching places with Rafferty. Over to the near side, Devlin with a shot and a save by Brogan. Devlin with that shot actually opened the scoring in last week's game against the Rowan University Props. Pretty early on in that contest, just 40 seconds in. Played behind the cage, back over to the far corner. Zach Tracy having a little trouble there as he has a couple of Hoyas on him. It's a very aggressive penalty kill. Well, actually, we're back to five-a-side hockey, I beg your pardon. And now the puck's moved up ahead for Leitke. Litke, I beg your pardon, puts it into the near corner inside the retriever zone. Back there to chase. Ahoya was there, ready to pop it home. That was Cadigan, but he loses control of it. And it'll be Fadler through center. Fadler across the Hoya line. In on his backhand. Takes a shot, fed to the front. Brogan a save. So it goes off into the corner. Chasing that rebound. Fadler trying to find it, but the Hoyas will. And it'll be Cadigan. It'll put it high into the air through neutral and through the legs of Devlin. Fast start here in the opening frame. 16-10 left here in the first. And the Retrievers are already 0 for 1 on the power play. Cleared up to the blue line. I believe that was Selbert that tried to clear it. And the second effort by the Retrievers does get it out into the neutral zone. Fritz doing a little aggravating there to force it back. Here comes a chance now. Walking in on goal. 
With it is Hannock. Hannock trying to move it to the front. A save up front. As he's been neutralized as he brings it up top. Dropping it behind for Fritz. Fritz up top to the blue line. And it's a shot taken by Andrew Nering that goes right in on Brogan who will hold on. We get a stoppage with 15.44 left here in the first. No score. UBC didn't get a goal on that power play, but they did a good job moving the puck around. Not stationary. Getting good shots. Good looks of rebounds. Brogan came up with a couple of good saves. Uh, good zone time and nearly got caught on that shorthanded break. Uh, but otherwise a very solid start and a good power play for UMBC. And as you see on the camera there behind the glass, it's Justin Freistadt who is uh, no longer on crutches. And we have an estimated time of two months for him to make his return onto the ice. So we look forward to his return and that booming shot he's got. And as it's stuffed up along the half boards, trying to free it. Here's Penrod. Penrod trying to move his way down low. Back down to goal line, far corner. He gets checked on the boards by Shea. Shea trying to push it up ahead. But instead, Jean-Luc Durante trying to move it away from the Hoya as it's played up into the glass and down low by Penrod. Back down to Chase. Shea getting around his man. Gets away from Jean-Luc Durante. And he's sent along the half boards up to the blue line. Not out with a long toss on. And it's Andrew Nering's shot. Gets steered aside and comes out in the neutral zone. Back to chase it is Travis Joyle. And sent through center trying to hook up with Jean-Luc. But looks like the retrievers are going to get a wholesale change. Hoyas breaking out of their own zone. And along the near side boards. It's Neustalt putting it up and into the retriever zone. As the Hoyas will change as well. It's 7-1 on the shots in favor of UMBC. I would actually argue that maybe there was a second shot on that shorthanded opportunity for Georgetown, unless that one went wide. But regardless, Georgetown is going to have a hand pass ruled against them, and we'll get the face off out of the UMBC zone. 14.37 left here in the first, and this one's going to come all the way down into the Georgetown zone. One thing to look uh, for as we go on this game, UMBC changed the lineup coming out of last weekend's loss against Liberty. Uh, but... Bloom and Durante with Armstrong instead of usually with O'Connor. Mm -hmm. uh, O'Connor is now with Tracy and Fadler. So with that juggle seemed to work out well last week. We'll see if it continues today. And as these lines continue to get more chemistry together, it ought to get even better. This is definitely the game to make sure things are in order for tomorrow night's game against William Patterson. We'll have that game also here on here on the cross ice feed. So tune in for that one as we have this one just underway. With 14.20 left here in the first. Here comes Daniel Durante trying to set up a pass into the slot for Bloom, but it misses everybody and goes all the way down the length of the ice. Miller's going to come out and support on this one. Actually, the Hoya getting in the way of that one was John Ryder, who slowed up for just a moment, but the Retrievers are going to break out with it. No Hoya pressing on that one. Ryder opted not to go after it. There's a shot on Brogan. Easy pass save as he steers that one behind the net. Durante getting crushed behind the net. And it was Zimmick that gave him some trouble. Matt Bloom walking in on goal. Backhands it to the front with a shot. They score! Please, Mommy, can I have a puppy? It's one nothing retrievers. The nice shot there and a good setup. Durante working well with Bloom up front, beating Brogan glove side up top. Those so, two yeah. UBCs never really had chemistry with Bloom and Durante. They've played together probably since they were 10, 12 years old. Uh, Durante helped convince Bloom to come to UMBC, coming out of the EJ. Uh, and Bloom has great vision, found Durante cross crease on the backhand, a real difficult play to make. And it was a good job by Durante getting a real great shot off, close quarters right under the bar. A nice hit there, taken up along the near side boards by Zach Tracy as it leads to a turnover. Going the other way, Fadler with a shot, trying to work his way with the puck, trying to stuff it home along the far side. And then, uh, there was no room there. Fine job by Brogan to cut off that angle. Hoyers running around inside their own zone, but finally they'll find a way to squeeze it out through center. Be picked up by Rafferty along the near side. And this one will be deflected into the UMBC penalty box and we'll get a stop to play. 13-14 left here in the first. We got a 1-0 score in favor of your UMBC Retrievers. Reminder, it's the Cross Ice Feed broadcast team and tonight we have myself, Sean Hoppy, and Hunter Nicolette on camera. And it's one back by Georgetown. And, but it's O'Connor that'll find it, playing it up ahead for Tracy, but it was out of his reach. It'll be picked up and sent back into his own zone. Ryder regrouping with Caputo. Through center, deflected down, no icing. Back in the retriever zone, into the far near corner, I beg your pardon. Cadigan going into the boards with Devlin. Devlin trying to kick it ahead. He's got Rafferty, but instead it'll be a Georgetown player in the way. Real dark jerseys here with some great numbering. 
Of course, their colors are the blue and gray. I'm sure I'll get educated on the actual color schemes later. So this one shot into the UMBC bench, and uh, boy, we got some rough stuff going on here. What happened on that one, Hoppy? Uh, OC came out, finished the check on the Georgetown player trying to dump it in. OC is not a player that UMBC relies on for a physical game. But anytime you see O'Connor coming in there, throwing the body, it really brings up the rest of the team, gets everyone going. Well, now we got Thomas Nearing and, and Alec Hannock out there with Fritz on the line. And Hannock will have it over on the far boards, leading it up ahead for Fritz. Fritz coming across the line, two on one, takes a shot, the save by Brogan, the rebound. It'll be picked up by the Hoyas and sent out through the middle of the ice, but it'll be picked up by Andrew Nearing. It'll be sent over to Selber, who will pop it in along the near side, down low, half boards. Hoyas turning it over, here comes a chance now, Hannock leaving it over for Fritz. Fritz couldn't handle the pass, as it goes behind him and picked up by Ronnie Caputo. Along the near side over to John Ryder. Ryder with a deke over, but he can't finish the move and take the puck into the net. So it goes over to Andrew Nering. Andrew Nering trying to clear it up along the boards. Trying to hook up there with Fritz, but it'll be cleared up along the half boards and out through center. And it'll be picked up by Thomas Nering. He'll backhand it in. And it looks like we're going to get a line change for the Retrievers. Fritz will stay out there, though. Putting out some pressure to get that line change completed. Along the near side for Joyle. Joyle couldn't, handle on, couldn't get a handle on it. Fritz will finally make his way off the ice. Georgetown, come back the other way with a shot from center. Goes right in on Miller with an easy save. Glove down, taken to the front with a shot. Miller making the save. Great save, Miller. That one came from point blank. The Georgetown player was Daniel Litke going down in the process. And we'll get a face off too. Miller's left, no call on that one. Bad turnover coming out of the UMBC zone. He tried to clear it, bouncing puck, went right, to, right into the Georgetown player's chest. You've seen UMBC with lots of chances on the forecheck, forcing turnovers. The last thing we want to do is give Georgetown some chances right back by giving the puck up in our own end. Fed around to the front with a shot that goes wide along the near side. Joyle trying to put it on his backhand up to the blue line, not out, kept in by Shea for the moment. Instead, it'll be picked up and bringing it the other way is Jean-Luc who takes his shot and a save by Brogan. Along the near side over to Penrod, Penrod. Getting checked into the boards. It'll be fed up top. John Luke over to Matt Kelly. Up to the blue line. He keeps it in. Down over to Penrod again. Penrod trying to look up into the slot. Finds John Luke with a shot and a block up front by Chad Hill. And it'll be the retrievers retreating back in their own zone. Organizing along the far blue line. Yost taking it out through center. On the far side of the neutral zone. He dumps it in back behind Brogan. Back to Chase. It is Shea. Dan Shea trying to move it, but John Luke got in the way of that one. John Luke up top to the point to Yost. Yost winding up, sending it through in a deflection. And trying to hook up on a deflection to get it on net. Instead, it hits the protective netting and goes out of play. With 10.38 left here in the first, one nothing retrievers on the Hoyas. A little bit of tough luck on the play. I think Yost saw Durante coming off the bench on the change from Penrod. Coming back door, he was calling for the puck, had his stick up in the air. Yost threw it that way. I don't know if Joyle saw Durante or thought he had a better play on it. But Joyle, uh, it's a good tip, but just a little bit too much. Now through neutral, we got a neutral zone battle here as it comes back into the Hoya zone. Retreating with it is Dracovic. Dracovic trying to put it up through center here. And now here comes a chance for Daniel Durante. Durante trying to squeeze his way around Caputo. Instead, it'll be the Hoyers coming out with Toparoff. Toparoff trying to get around Devlin, but instead it'll be Bloom that'll pick it up at the red line across the Hoya line. And he's got four to beat here. Not much support as he throws it to the front. A chance there. Dan Durante couldn't pick up the rebound on that low percentage shot that went in on Brogan. It's back behind the net, and the Hoyas will find it. Taking it off over to the far side is Dravkovic. Putting it up into the neutral zone. Rafferty turning it back over to Dravkovic. And as it goes up to the retriever's line, the Hoyas will get some entry here as they take it off into the far corner. But it'll be picked up. No, it'll be turned over with a shot. It just goes above the cage. Almost taken off the head of Miller. On the near side boards inside the retriever zone, fed out through center, out of the reach of Durante. It'll be picked up by Shea. Dan Shea putting it in on his back end. Rafferty back down there to chase. So he has Sim Allen on his tail. And will check him as now a chance. O'Connor gets tripped up and he's going to draw another penalty. It's the second time Sean O'Connor has drawn a tripping penalty. So with 9.23 left here in the first, they're going to try to give it a second try on the Green Turtle power play. That's the speed of O.C. We've seen it now for, this is his fourth year. Very fast player, and when he decides to turn on the Jets, it's hard for people to catch up to him. So he's used his speed this time in the defensive zone, trying to turn the puck up ice on the breakout. Just people can't catch up for him. You reach, you hook, you hold, you trip. 
It's good job by O.C. Wiseman got in the way of that one, the clearing attempt. As it'll be Sim Allen, it'll sit for the two. As he tripped up O.C. Jean-Luc setting up the pass. Up ahead. Over to the near side, Tracy passing it over to Rafferty. Rafferty winding up taking a shot, missing the glove side of Brogan. Kept in by UMBC, over to the near, far side, Devlin. Back over to the near side. Rafferty down low, that stuff there, and a rebound. Comes off the pad of Brogan. And be kept active by Tracy. Tracy, running it over to Rafferty. Rafferty, putting it into the slot. DJ Fadler comes in on his back, and what a great pass saved by Brogan. As it comes up to the blue line, not out, kept in by Rafferty. Over to Fadler. Fadler, getting around his man, digging out Shea. Fadler walking in, taking it behind the net. With a feed to the front, Brogan, a great save, the rebound, and another great save by Brogan. 105 left here in the Green Turtle power play. Retrievers got their chances. Rafferty keeping it into the blue line. Over to Tracy. Tracy trying to stuff it down low for Fadler, but it got stopped up by the Hoyas. Red. Neustadl has gotten in the way of that one. Neustadl's going to put it over to the far side. The Hoyas are going to come away with a breakaway. Short-handed with Cadigan. Cadigan in alone, taking a shot. Saved by Miller. What a great pad save by Trevor Miller. The Retrievers are going to come back the other way through neutral. Going to come back three on two. Or three on three, I beg your pardon. Now Zach Tracy. Far circle, feeding into the slot, and the puck just dropped over the top of Thomas Nearing stick and over into the corner. Bloom trying to wrangle it down, but it comes out of the neutral zone on a Hoya clear. 30 seconds left on the Green Turtle power play. Visit them at two restaurant park drive in Owings Mills, Maryland. Those in attendance will get $5 off an entree. Offer expires December 31st, 2012. This one's cleared down by the Hoyas all the way to Miller. Miller getting pressured by Walsh. The Retrievers are going to settle it down here with Yost. Yost across the red line, across the blue line into Hoyas territory. Dropping the pass over to Daniel Durante. Dan Durante putting it over into the near corner. Off a deflection there actually was Drakovic to try to clear it through. And comes up to the far blue line to Bloom. Now we're back to five-a-side hockey. The Hoyas will intercept it as Allen came flying out of the penalty box. This one goes down to Miller. Miller's going to slow it down, and he'll hold on to get the faceoff with 7-12 left here in the first. One-nothing score in favor of your UMBC Retrievers. It's the second time UMBC's got caught on the power play, uh, getting someone behind him. Mm. One thing, mm. there's not much argument that UMBC has more talent than Georgetown, and one thing that you can get suckered into when you're playing a game like this is getting into bad habits. Uh, Colin Devlin, yeah, he's converted forward to defenseman, but you got it no better than to try and pinch there. You back off, let the guy come to you. Uh, got caught, and then saw all five guys come back on the back check. It was a good job by Rafferty and Tracy to not take a penalty on that back check. But uh, UMBC's got to keep playing their game regardless of how much talent they have. And then we'll get a second try at it inside the retriever's zone as now it's going to be picked up by Benrod. Benrod coming in, feeding it to the front. A chance there by John Luke. What a save by Brogan who got in the way of that one. Comes up to the blue line, not out. Cody Selbert just gets wrecked. Absolutely destroyed by John Ryder. And it's sent over to the far side to Shea. Shea almost had his pocket picked by Penrod as it's sent up to the red line and out. It's picked up by Joy. He'll pop it right back into the Hoya zone. Back there to Chase. Here's Zimmick. We'll set it up along the near side and out. And it'll be picked up in front of the retriever's bench. Nobody really going to get it, except Andrew Nairing will get his way in there. And Joyle trying to strip the puck away from Heel. Heel still with it, feeding it to the front and almost having a chance there to connect on it. But it was, I believe it was Tracy that got in the way of that one. Tracy forced it out in the neutral zone. The Hoyas will pop it right back in. And it's picked up by Rafferty. Rafferty trying to set it up to O'Connor. O'Connor having trouble with it as he has a stick slapped away from him. As he takes out his check in the process. Hoyas with a shot from the point. And it'll be new style that'll try to bury it through all that traffic, but it goes off from the far corner, and we got a scrum for it. Walking away with it is UMBC. Walking out with that puck. I can't tell who Fadler. that is. That is DJ Fadler. You can tell. He's got that unique cage that nobody else has on that team. Now Fadler battling for it. Drops it down low for Tracy. Tracy with the backhand feet up front to O'Connor, who takes a shot, and it just goes wide. Picked up along the near side by Georgetown. And moved along by Litke. Litke setting up a pass along the left wing over to Walsh. Georgetown moving left to right on your radio dial. Retrievers going right to left with a chance there. The Hoyas and the Retrievers are going to get called. It looks like, uh, I guess, roughing is going to be the call with the head contact. So 5.23 left here in the first. The Hoyas are going to get their first crack at it on the power play as the Retrievers go on the Hilton Garden Inn penalty kill. 
Rafferty made a good play stepping up. Uh, bad turnover by Devlin. Obviously wanted to share those up. But Rafferty went to step up on his man, got his hands a little too high up, made contact with the head. It's something referees are paying attention to a lot more nowadays. And so that's kind of an easy call. Helmet makes a more distinct sound when you hit it. So the face off will be to the left of Miller. And 5.22 left here in the first. one nothing Retrievers as the shot goes wide and Miller. And rebound picked up behind the net and it'll be Yost that'll walk away with it. Setting it up ahead for Bloom. Short-handed try here as he's trying to work around a couple of Hoyas, but he turns it over to Shea in the process. He's just fed up along for Cadigan. Cadigan walking it, takes a shot, scores! Brad Cadigan lighting up the glove side of Trevor Miller. And just like that, the Hoyas get a power play goal to knock this one up at one with 5.03 left here in the first period. Those are those bad habits I was talking about earlier. UMBC with control on the penalty kill as opposed to just dumping it down. They try and go on the rush. Bloom loses it. Yost makes a bad step up in the neutral zone. Go down a two on one. Nothing really Trevor Miller could do about that. He just ripped a shot from the hash marks basically. And it's hard to stop, especially if the guy's got any uh, velocity on it. And clearly it did. And Cadigan will get the goal. Shea with the assist. And that'll be it. And the Retrievers coming back the other way with Bloom. Bloom at the top of the circle, near side. Picked off as he gets checked off the puck. But he'll keep it in at the blue line, but only for a moment as it goes off of Allen and out in the neutral zone. Fed back in, but not deep enough as it's picked up by Ryder. Ryder retreating back towards his net. Gets around Armstrong, sends it out through center. And a weasel down was Kelly, but instead it'll be Yost that'll walk his way through. Pushing up high into the play. Bloom down to Yost. Yost walks in, hits the side of the net. And it looked good from up here, but the net's going to get... Knocked off as Dan Durante got pushed in by Allen. So we'll like that. We'll get a stoppage of play. 425 left here in the first. And Hoyas still coming off just a recent power play goal, tying this one up. Feeling pretty good about that. They tie up the dogs in Reisterstown here. The home of the UMBC Retrievers. They don't like to lose at home, do they now? No, not so much. Uh, Georgetown sticking around the game isn't something that they're a stranger to. Even when they play the top teams, they generally keep it close for a couple periods, but their depth kind of shows as they wear down later on. Uh, hope maybe UMBC can get back on track, get back to playing their game. I'm sure Coach Vogel will have some words in the uh, locker room about all these careless plays. Cadigan with a shot along the side of the net. He had two tries on it, tried to stuff it short side, but it'll be Miller that'll put down the pad and stop this one as 4.03 remains here in the first. I gotta get him to get a plug for us. Yeesh. I need to I need to feel appreciated up here. <laughs> That's what a lot of people watching at home before. Oh, exactly. By the way, like us on Facebook. We've had over a hundred likes, and of course we give credit to those that liked us last weekend. So give us a thumbs up on Facebook. Look us up cross ice feed. Oh yes, taking a shot, getting deflected off in the far corner. He picked up by the retriever, sent back. I believe that was Andrew Nairing. It'll send it over to the near side. And set, sent out through center. Brandon Fritz trying to get around his man. Couldn't get through to take his shot as this one sent up into the glass and out in the neutral zone. Back for Cody Selbert. Selbert hits somebody off the bench and we'll get a stoppage of play. That's one of those bad habits. It's just UMBC's got to get the puck in deep and play their game. Fritz, hardworking kids, skates fast, goes down on the forecheck. He's not really known for dangling people one hand on the backhand up at the blue line. So it's just UMBC's got to remember that we're UMBC and we're not the Detroit Red Wings. Good call, good call. You almost had me confused, though. They are wearing kind of the Nashville Predators design. Yeah, but uh, Nashville's not an offensive team. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're more defensive. Good good call, good call. Good defense and good goaltending over there in Nashville. But here, you know, we're going to have Trevor Miller split some time here with John Drago, but uh, Miller's stopped seven of eight shots in this contest. Is a hard check there by... Penrod off in the far corner, or the far half boards, I beg your pardon, is a shot teed up by the Hoyas. And another save by Miller. That one's not going to get counted up on the clock, apparently. Really. Shots are always kind of a margin of error thing, I guess. So now John Luke has it along the near side. John Luke off in the corner, battling Shea for it. John Luke having a trap between his feet, doesn't realize it's there. Now he does, and he's trying to get some support from behind him. Joyle's down there low with him. They said the Hoyas will win that battle as Litke has it now. Litke looking cross ice. He finds heel on the cross ice feed as it goes over back behind Miller. Back there to chase is Ben Rafferty as the Hoyas get a wholesale change. 
And moving it up ahead. Trying to move it through center. Rafferty trying to hook up a Tracy, but Tracy wasn't there to receive the pass. And lazy clear up by the Ho Hoyas. Almost gets picked up by the Retrievers, but it will be a turnover in the neutral zone. That results in the Retrievers entering the Hoya zone yet again. And the Hoyas will quickly get back out because we got a one-on-one -on -one forming here with Cadigan going up against Yost. Cadigan, a nice little move. Gets around Yost, tries to take a shot, but Yost got the stick up just in the nick of time. And another chance at it. Hoyas on a backhand shot and a save by Miller. Steered off to the far boards over to DJ Fadler. Fadler along the near side over to O'Connor. O'Connor gets around his man with a nice little move. Goes in along the near wing. Back behind for Brogan. Brogan setting it up with 143 left here in the first. 1-1 one, one score. Along the near boards and out. It'll be picked up at the red line and sent right back in by Walsh. Sean Walsh clearing it all the way into the zone. It's picked up by Ryder. Ryder along the near side for the Hoyas. Another cross ice pass sent ahead for Heal. Heal trying to get around Yost. Yost with a couple slaps at it. Finally gets up to the blue line and it's kicked out. And that's Fadler came to support. Sean O'Connor across the line. Sean O'Connor still trying to move his way through as we have 1.15 to go here. Sent up to the circle. Up top, Yost taking a shot. Almost picked up by Tracy, who didn't even touch the puck. And we're going to get the interference call on that one for sure. Good call there by the official. As, uh, I certainly caught that one from up here. Yeah, I think everyone did, except obviously Georgetown Bench. They didn't like that one. I'm They're not sure not why. To please Coach uh, Brad Card. I think it was a weak call. Hopefully UMBC can first. get something here at the end, mm -hmm. just something to build on. You don't want to go 1-1 at the end of the first against Georgetown. I'll probably feel like we're down 5 nothing against most other teams. Just disappointing period. Uh, just got to get back to what UMBC's had working. A little miscommunication up top there as Bloom collided with Yost, but it comes down low for Dandarante. Fed through to the slot. Nobody there to pick it up for the Retrievers, and it'll be swept out by Litke. Last minute to uh, go here. Last minute in the first period. Almost wanted to make that announcement like I was in the public address. And Yost curling back behind Miller. His time ticks down here as we're on the third Green Turtle power play. They're 0 for 2 so far in this contest as it comes along the near side wing. Over to O'Connor, feeding it to the front, and Brogan's going to reach out and hold on to it as Thomas Nairn came in there and was looking to stuff it home. 37.8 seconds left here in the first. 16 to 9, shots in favor of the Retrievers, but the score is all knotted up at 1. Face off to the right of Brogan. Dan Durante taking that face off as so we have a last second change. And now the ice is Allen for the Hoyas. One back into the near corner. O'Connor looking to stuff it up front. And getting in the way of that one was Caputo. Back down low for Dan Durante. Durante, far half boards. Looking for an option here as it comes over to O'Connor. In his skates. Almost getting a chance at it. There was Allen to sweep it out, but it'll be Yost that'll pick it up. Yost coming across the near side blue line. Will he get there first? He does. He sends it over to Bloom. Bloom along the near circle. 15 seconds, looking for a shot. Bloom takes a shot. Brogan to save. So it gets steered off into the near corner. Thomas Naring putting it up top. Over to Bloom. Bloom, cross ice feed over to Yost. Yost looking for an opportunity here, but that'll do it for this first period as time will expire. And we'll have 51 seconds on the other side on the Green Turtle power play. 1 1 score after one. David Sturz with Sean Hoppy. Join us back here in a few moments' time for the second period action and a brief recap of the first period. Stay tuned. Retrievers hockey here on Cross Ice Feed. 1-1 score against the Georgetown Hoyas. Everybody to Reisterstown Sportsplex in Reisterstown, Maryland. I'm David Stearns. Join with Sean Hoppy as we are tied up at one after one between the UMBC Retrievers and the Georgetown Hoyas. Now, uh, Hoppy, you have an updated score. I went through all the scores from last night, but we do have a final score today, and it actually does have an impact in the Southeast rankings from uh, your understanding and my understanding. Uh, well, it's a science, but who did what to whom? Uh, number 14, Pittsburgh, went into Toledo and beat the number six-ranked Toledo Rockets 5-2 to two earlier today. So uh, expect Toledo to drop down, but there's a whole big mess on that that there's some guy who writes a whole lot of about that oh yeah i'm sure you can find uh he has a tumblr account that he breaks all the stuff down in yeah was it h101 underscore twisted on t uh, tumblr that's his twitter he does everything oh, that's his twitter oh well that guy knows a lot of stuff so check him out he does some really in-depth commentary on his thoughts uh, as far as the southeast in uh, much detail. So check it out. By the way, as you notice in the pregame, I am supporting a stash, or I'm sporting a stash here in support of Movember. Go to Movember.com. It raises awareness on prostate cancer in men. A couple great stashes going on for UMBC. Uh, 
Here, Kelly's got one going on. Not oh, looking yeah. too good because he's a blonde. It just—it's just <laughs> it's dirty, isn't it? <laughs> Panic's got one that's absolutely fantastic. Oh yeah, nice and full. <laughs> Who? Oh, Kibler. Okay. Kibler's got a full. Suit. All right, all right. I think Nicolette's trying to grow one. He's been working on it since he was born. And it hasn't come in yet. <laughs> It's coming. It's coming. Well, here we go. Face off one back into the retriever zone as it goes all the way up to the blue line of the Hoyas. And the, the Hoyas that will pop it right back in and down towards Miller. But it will be Bloom back there to play. we got 30 seconds left on the fourth Green Turtle power play. They're 0 for 3 so far. Looking to go 25% here. It's now you also take it all the way around the world. Taking it over the half boards near side. Up top of the circle near side. Up along the half boards and chip down low. Back over to O'Connor. O'Connor back up top. Yost winds up, takes a shot. Doesn't make its way through traffic. It's loose up front. Still loose. Nobody knows where it is. And it's cleared off to the half boards near side. Will be picked up by O.C. O.C. putting it deep. Trying to hook up with Durante. Couldn't get there in time. It'll be Dan Durante. Clearing up to the front. Here comes a chance. Thomas Nairn coming in on goal. Taking a shot to save by Brogan. He'll hold on. It's the 18th shot for the Retrievers. Gets stopped up. Brogan making 17 saves on 18 shots as we're back to five-a-side hockey. Not much coming from the power play here at all for the Retrievers. It's still a good zone setup. I made the mistake. That was the end of their third one. Uh, so 0 for 3 on the power play now. Uh, UMBC's shown a little bit more urgency to come out. Uh, Coach Vogel, I talked about it a little bit with us in between periods. So I'll see if UMBC can come out and get back to... Greasy hockey. Greasy hockey. I like it. And the Retrievers try, trying to get some offensive activity going here again as it's along the far side. And the Hoyas will pick it up, sending it up through center. Pass out of the reach of Litke. Litke having trouble with it as it was tapped by Rafferty, but it will be picked up by Walsh. Sent in with a shot on Miller. Miller didn't know where that rebound went as it went over to the far circle and cleared out by Dapper Dan Armstrong. And it's picked up by his counterpart, number 24, back in his own zone. It's New Staddle. And Armstrong trying to push it back into the Hoyas zone. The Hoyas are forced back into their own zone for a moment as it comes out to Litke. Litke through center. Trying to hook up there with Heal, but Heal had his pocket pick. Brandon Fritz trying to work his way through traffic in the neutral zone. It's all about neutral zone battles at this point. Early on in this second period, 18 minutes left here in the second. 1-1 one, one score. Brogan having trouble controlling it behind his net, but finally he does get it over along the wing, and it's cleared out. Thomas Nairn back along his blue line, far side, trying to clear up through the center. But it will be picked up by the Hoyas and sent right back into the retriever zone. Miscommunication there as the Hoyas have it inside the retriever zone just for a moment, and it's poked out by Yo. When in doubt, count on Yost. Over the near side, chipped ahead up by Hannock. Over to Yost. Yost getting checked almost into the Georgetown bench. He slid along and bumped into a few players, narrowing with it along the red line, and he backhands it in, and Brogan will come out to set it up behind the net for Shea. Shea getting around one check, trying to move it along the half boards far side. Sticked out of the air and kept in by Nairing. And it's Thomas Nairing, but it'll be the Hoyas that'll find it, breaking it out through the neutral zone. Stopped up along the blue line by Yost, just inside of the retriever zone. Yost on one knee trying to move it out. And it's underneath a bunch of bodies there. It's finally chipped out and cleared into the neutral zone. Hoy is tagging up and clearing it back in, but not deep enough because it's picked up by Matt Kelly. Kelly going back over to Yost. Yost through center to Hannock. Hannock coming across the blue line. Hannock opting to go near side, sweeping it to the front, trying to hook up with Thomas Nearing. Thomas Nearing trying to stuff it short side. Doesn't get past Brogan. And clear to the front. It's picked up by the Hoyas, and they'll break out of their own zone with Shea. Shea winding up, couldn't get it past Kelly. And it'll be picked up by Hannock. Hannock with a backhand pass over to Selbert. Far side, neutral zone. The lead pass ahead for Joyle. Joyle with a drop pass behind for Fritz along the far circle. Fritz trying to deke his way through Shea, but Shea got the best of him and picked his pocket, sending the puck into the neutral zone, high and into the air. Andrew Nearing will put it over to the near side and clear it in, and it'll be a chance now for Penrod, far corner, or near corner, I beg your pardon. And Fritz looking for an option up top. Selbert with a shot and a block up front. Nice diving effort there by Chad Hill. And goes over to the far corner, and we'll have a stoppage of play with what I believe will be in offsides. 16.08 left here in the second 1-1 one, one score. David Stearns here for the Cross Ice Feed with Sean Hoppy and Hunter Nicolette. Next broadcast will be tomorrow night, 5.15. William Patterson Pioneers will be in town. Number four ranked in the Northeast. Losing last night 7-6 to the number two in the Southeast, and that's Rowan University Props. John Luke trying to move his way to the front. He actually got checked along 
his route to the front of the net, and the Hoyas will clear it out. And down the length of the ice, nobody there to play it, and they're going to call this one an icing as Georgetown begged to differ. They thought there was a chance for the Retrievers to touch it, but no! That is not the case, and the faceoff will come back next to the keeper, Connor Brogan, from Hershey, Pennsylvania. UBC's fourth line on the ice there has probably been the best line in terms of running the systems that Coach Vogelai wants throughout the period. Getting rewarded, uh, trying to set an example for some of the more skilled players who are trying to do a little bit too much. Uh, help UBC get back to basics, keep it simple, stupid type stuff. Walsh backhanding it in, Miller steering it aside, chasing down that rebound is heel, but will be picked up by Bloom is trying to gain some speed, trying to get ahead of the Hoya that got there first, and that was Caputo. Kept in by Armstrong. Armstrong trying to put it deep. Instead, it'll be the Hoyas heel trying to walk away with it. No, Armstrong will pick it up. Over to Bloom with a shot. Brogan made the save. Actually, it didn't make its way through Brogan. Stopped up in front. He thought he was going to have to make a save on Armstrong picking up that rebound in front, but it'll be cleared up by the Hoyas all the way back to Ben Rafferty. Colin Devlin and Rafferty playing some catch now. Rafferty along the near side, feeding it through center. The pass out of the reach of Bloom, and it'll be cleared in. Taken in by Zimmick, who takes a high shot, goes right into the glove of Miller, who drops it off for Devlin. Devlin being pressured by Cadigan. Along the far side over to Armstrong with a lead pass up ahead for Bloom, who chips it into the Hoya zone. Not deep enough, as it just goes all the way back and really taken behind the cage by the Hoyas, and I believe that is Ryder with it, setting up shot. A nice move there. Making his moves through a couple of players is Cadigan. Cadigan along the far circle inside the retriever zone. Setting up a shot and a save by Miller. Off of a rider shot. Almost stuffed home along the near side. But the net is knocked off. And we'll get the stoppage with 14.35 to play here in the second. 1-1 one, one score. Georgetown is giving the dogs a fight. Well, they're dogs too. I mean, it's just yeah. retrievers and bulldogs. And it's a dog fight. It is a dog fight. Just don't tell Michael Vick. <laughs> Rafferty leading it out of the retriever zone through neutral. Pinching up high into the play, almost getting a return pass. As he pinched in, the retriever's getting caught on their changes here. And instead, they're going to get back there as Cadigan takes his shot, and this one's deflected up into the protective netting. You had mentioned before, to me before we went back onto the air here, uh, that uh, Justin Freestadt was joined with Justin Stewart, who was making, uh, looking to make a comeback here in the spring semester. Uh, talk about the impact that he might bring if he comes back in the lineup. Uh, Stewie. Stewie. Uh, even though he only played half the season last year, still wound up the number three scorer for UMBC. He played top line with OC and Durante. Uh, with Bloom on the second line. If th we can add a second, or even third at this point because of the emergence of Zach Tracy as a scoring threat, uh, UMBC can really add some scoring depth, uh, make it real difficult for teams to match up on them when you have three lines that can put the puck in the net. Lipke taking a shot, a rebound coming up front. Trying to get a hold of it was heel, but instead the Retrievers are going to break out the other way. Fritz and Yost trying to work together. Yost with it. Fritz couldn't get a handle on it. Fritz looking for it, but he didn't get it in his wheelhouse. Is it fed to the front with the shot? Oh, and Brogan makes a save in the rebound. Goes up high and behind the cage. Thomas Nering trying to step it home along the far side of the post. And instead, it'll be the Hoyas trying to clear it up to the blue line. And now, no, they're it's going to be kept in nicely there at the blue line by Walsh. This one will go right in on Brogan, and Thomas Nering's going to apply some pressure and get the whistle with 13.40 left here in a second. 20 to 14 shots being led by the Retrievers, but the Hoyas are closing the gap. UMBC still trying a little too much, not making the simple plays. Uh, Yost, probably the best player for UMBC, still trying to do too much. He's up on the rush instead of back at his defensive position. UMBC just got to calm down, trust in their skill and their systems that they will wind up prevailing instead of trying to force the issue here. Yost being pressured hard from behind by Walsh, but he'll drop the pass back over to Walsh. The other Walsh, that's Sean Walsh for us and Dan Walsh for them. And I beg your pardon, it's, uh, yeah, it is Dan Walsh. And here's a shot right in on Brogan, easy save, and he'll hold on, 13-21 left. Uh, that's just a bunch of shots and no rebounds at this point. Miller having a little bit of trouble with some of the rebounds on his shots in this period so far. He has an op he's had an opportunity to hold on to a couple of them. Well, they talked in the interview before the game, uh, we will be posted later, about how last weekend against Rowan, defense did a good job of keeping the pucks to the outside and not allowing any real high-quality shots. Yeah. And that's what UMBC has been allowing, frankly, today. A lot of high slot opportunities, low slot. You just It's well, difficult for any goalie to yeah. make multiple saves like that. And They're challenging him today, and that's just what it's pretty much coming down to. 
Yeah. Well, a little bit of a scrum in front of the Hoyas net will result in a face-off coming up to the left of Brogan. As we have 13.05 left here in a second. The Retriever's looking to turn it on here, hopefully sometime soon. Jean-Luc will take the face off of the Retrievers. He wins it back up top with a shot from Andrew Nairn getting blocked in front as it's found its way over to the far corner. And it'll be the Hoyas that are going to try to push it up along the blue line and out through center, but it'll be picked up by Penrod. Trying to get used to Penrod. Haven't called his name much as he's in there replacing Paget. This one's going to miss everybody, and we're going to have an icing charge against the Retrievers. That's the fourth line for UMBC doing a good job coming back in the neutral zone, blocking down the wings, forcing turnovers. Really what UMBC's, frankly, done most of the year when they're playing well. Uh, fourth line getting a lot of ice time. Haven't really seen much of Tracy, Fadler, OC this period. So uh, good, hardworking line getting more ice time because of it. And a backhand pass by Selber was not caught up by Penrod as it goes deep back into the retriever zone. Penrod along the half boards near side, trapping it up along the boards, looking for support from Selbert. And the Hoyas are going to walk away with it. And it's Toparoff. Toparoff trying to keep it in as you get a little support from Caputo, and this one goes in to the Georgetown bench. But the faceoff is going to be ruled inside the retriever zone as it went off of a dog. A retriever dog, that is. Yes. D A W G. Once again, we remind everybody, tomorrow we'll have the William Patterson Pioneers and the UMBC Retrievers squaring off here at Rice's Town. 5.15 slated for warm-ups. Game time will come around 5.30, 5.45. This one's sent down the length of the ice, and the Retrievers are going to get tagged with another icing. Is this a desperation move or what? Well, Georgetown, one thing that I've noticed in my career when I was playing is that when you have a team they're frankly you're better than you can't let them hang around once they hang around they start getting confidence and they start playing better uh more stability in their game and that's what umbc's let georgetown do they've hung around now they're starting to get confident seeing if they can play with umbc and uh causing some trouble for umbc as a result of it dan durante with a centering feed over to armstrong armstrong along the near side blue line feeding the cross ice pass over to bloom but it was out of his reach Hoyas will clear it out in the neutral zone. Devlin back at his own blue line. Through center for Bloom. Bloom finds it on a, a bounce back, but instead it'll be the Hoyas that'll find it to clear it out in the neutral zone yet again at the red line. And Andorante back there to recover. Durante getting around one man. He gets around Allen. Durante still with it. Far circle. Looking to cut his way in. Comes in, takes a shot, and a great pass saved by Brogan as he tried to stuff it in. There's a rebound. Sitting there loose. We've got a couple of bodies on their keisters there, and they got in the way of a couple of Rebound opportunities, and the Hoyas are going to come back the other way. Ryder trying to throw it in on Miller, but it'll be caught up by Armstrong. Armstrong trying to clear it up for Fadler. Fadler had to settle it down as it goes over to Rafferty. Rafferty with the pass over to Armstrong. Armstrong over to the blue line to Bloom, and Bloom deflected behind his back on a pass, and it'll be the Hoyas that'll send it down the length of the ice. No icing as Devlin's going to get there. Oh, no, they're going to rule it an icing. That one looked like it was going to go a little short, and it looked like Devlin had let up on it, but I guess we're going to get the icing ruled, and Georgetown is unhappy about it. Looks like uh, O.C.'s having some skate problems. Look, he's going to have to go off for that. Justin Don't know what Archimus the situation is. Tend to it here. And this is a good time to plug in. If you like the dog gear you see out there, sweatshirts and all sorts of fun things, see number two, number two design.com. It's Catch-22 Design, the official apparel of the UMBC Retrievers Hockey Club. Face off one back by the Hoyas into their near corner inside their own zone. And it'll be Ryder with it. Dropping it back behind him for Caputo. Caputo and Ryder playing catch now. Ryder doesn't realize it's behind him. He'll try to sweep it back, but instead it'll be Hannock that'll be there to retrieve it. Hannock will be crunching to the boards, and the Hoyas will clear it up along the glass and out, and all the way down the length of the ice. This one will be ruled and icing. 10.43 left here in a second. The score clock's making some fidgety, fidgety little moves there. We had some trouble in the pregame with the score clock, but hopefully it does not go out in this contest any further. The Zamboni guy was pretty adamant. I have an extra wire. And it's Tracy with a shot that just goes wide. Tracy having two goals in the previous contest against Rowan. He has it now. Feeding it up into the slot for Fadler, but it goes out of his reach, and it will be picked up by the Hoyas and now through neutral. And it's Cadigan. Trying to move it up ahead for Litke, but it's turned over to Yost. Yost with the lead pass over to Fadler. Fadler in on his back end for him with a shot. Brogan makes a save. Rebound picked up by the Hoyas, and they'll take it out through the neutral zone as Fadler takes out his check, stopping things up on a rush. The Hoyas will retrieve it at the red line, and they'll 
softly put it right back in over to Miller, who will set it up for Yost. Yost being pressured hard there by Litke. Yost is going to get around him, but it goes over to the half boards, picked up by the Hoyas. Hoyas with a backhand feed to the front off the stick of Dan Walsh. Over to the near side to Alec Hannock. Hannock on a backhand pass to Tracy. Tracy couldn't carry it out. The Hoyas will keep it in. Up front, Heel trying to find his way to Litke with the puck, but it'll be picked up by Yost. Yost sending it around the horn over to the far blue line. Not out, kept him by Shea, who teed up a shot, and Heel couldn't get it. Up in the slot. Hannock trying to clear across ice, but it'll be... The Hoyas will stop it up along the half boards, battling for it now. It is Matt Kelly and Hannock. Kelly moving it down low for Tracy. 9.30 left here in a second, 1-1 one, one score. Tracy fanning on his attempt for a pass to Fadler. Gets it on the second attempt. They're going to delay this one on an offside, and the Retrievers will touch it, and we'll get a face-off in the neutral zone with 9.22 to play. So 23-14 says the shot clock. UMBC with a nine-shot margin lead on that, but they are all knotted up at one. We'll Line see what that up. skate problem probably lets light a little bit to why we haven't seen that line out there too much. Uh, OC got in late to the game. He was up at, up home in New York taking some uh, police testing this morning. Hmm. Got down here about probably 15 minutes before warm-ups. He's on the good side of the law, right? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Didn't know if he had like a drug test to take because this one's kicked out into the penalty box by Andrew Neri. Oh, okay, good. He's going to be a cop. <laughs> or at least that's what it seems to be. Uh, so we got going on with the skate issue right now. Looks like uh, Coach Vogelai did a little marathon around the rink. Hopefully uh, some good things result in this and OC can get back onto the ice. Selber, the pass over to Andrew Nairn. Through center, tried to hook up there with John Luke, but it's intercepted by the Hoyas. Feeding it to the front and trying to deflect it through was Taparoff. Goes over to the near corner. Andrew Nairn trying to fish it free for Penrod, but instead it'll be the Hoyas walking away with it. With a backhand shot to the front. Miller making a save. The rebound. A great save by Miller. This one's pushed off into the far corner. Hoyas still gaining control of it here. And it's up in the blue paint, and Miller will fall down on it and hold on as Dan Callahan is putting on a lot of pressure all by himself, what a great shit for Callahan for the Hoyas. Good shit for the Hoyas. Bad turnover by Andrew Nairn coming out of the defensive zone. Tried to make a stretch pass through the middle. You know, to don't, you've been taught since you were five, six years old and first been on the skates that you don't try and clear it up the middle. Uh, got picked off, held it at the blue line. A couple good shots for Georgetown. UMBC's, it's simple things. Yep. And UMBC's not doing the simple things. Georgetown is. Uh, and that's, right now is why it's 1-1. That and Trevor Miller making some uh, pretty good stops. Back to basics is the mantra at this point as it goes up to the blue line, not out, kept in by Shea. Along the half boards near side, walking in to the slot, Allen tried to get through traffic, but instead it'll be Devlin playing it over to Dan Durante with a pass over to Matt Bloom. Delicate City natives hooking up here. Bloom losing an edge there, falling into the boards. Mahoy is trying to clear it out. They'll pick it up along the half boards and clear it over to the far side of the neutral zone. Ben Rafferty will be there to pick it up. Rafferty over to the near side inside of his own zone. Over to Devlin. Devlin with a cross ice pass trying to find Armstrong. He misses everybody. And Brogan will come out to play it. No icing. Drakovic trying to move it up ice. He picked up by Fadler who takes a shot and a great glove saved by Brogan with 8.01 left here in the second. Still knotted up at one. Sloppy play. Very sloppy play. Sloppy all around. Uh, Puck seems to be bouncing on some guys out here. Seems to be bouncing a lot all year, actually, here at Reisterstown, uh, no matter what the game has been. But uh, good job by Fowler there, just corralling that turnover and then firing it on net. Something that Georgetown's been doing to UMBC, but haven't been able to return the favor with all these opportunities we've been getting. Well, Coach had some good things to say about Fowler in the Coach Vogelai's corner. Check that out, umbcretrievershockey.blogspot.com, or check it out in the iTunes store. Look up UMBC Retrievers Hockey to subscribe for free. There comes a chance now. Zach Tracy wrangling this one down. Far circle. Deeks around one. Couldn't get around the second one behind him. As it was Dan Walsh who cleared out in the neutral zone. And the Retrievers tagged up. And that one was a little close. But Coach Vogelai will shake his head. He agrees. That was offsides. And Dave Kurtz, too, for that matter. They, they both shook their heads. Shout out to uh, Jeff Pellish, by the way, assistant coach out there in Maine with his fiance, having a little vacation, kind of the wrong time of year to go up to Maine. I mean, I think it's Still August cold. that they do the uh, lobster fest. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, li just a little chilly. 
Now Fadler with the pass ahead for Tracy. Tracy walking and taking a shot. Brogan, the shader rebound was sloppy there, but it fell down in front of him. And he'll glove it down and hold on. 7-14 to go here in the second period. 1-1 one, one score. Tighter contest than we were expecting. That well, was better by Tracy on that rush. Uh, the last rush up the ice, he tried to make a move around defenseman. Didn't work out for him. Uh, when he's been successful this, this year, he's just come into the zone with speed and let a shot go. It's not been these fancy deke around guys. Uh, frankly, that's been the way with most of UMBC. When they try and get too fancy, that's when they come into trouble. Tracy trying to wrap around it to the front, and it'll be cleared down like the ice. This one may not make it for an icer. No, it won't, as Nick Yost will pick it up along the hash marks near side boards. Trying to move it ahead, and he's getting pressure there by Hill. And he's going to have to go off into the far side. And a pass up ahead for Jean-Luc, who centers it over to Tracy, and the pass out of the reach of Fadler. Just an update, Sean O'Connor's skate has been repaired. He is lacing up now. Now Jean-Luc with a pass for Tracy. Tracy across the blue line. Feeds it over to Fadler. Goes behind him and he can't find it as it's loose up in the slot and the Hoyas will retrieve it. Getting it over to Heal. He'll send it over to the far side of the neutral zone. Cleared in and down the ice. No icing. Selbert back there. Play it. Far circle in his own zone. Up along the boards. Trying to hook up there with a pass. And a shot there by the Hoyas going wide. Off the stick of Dan Walsh. Selbert clearing it out into the neutral zone. Back at the Hoyas blue line. Dan Walsh will pick it up. Leading it through center. Almost picked off by Bloom, who tried to push it ahead. And misses a few sticks. Deflects off a few sticks, rather, and comes over to the near side, over to Matt Kelly. Selbert up ahead for Dan Durante. Over to Kelly again along the near side. Kelly trying to get around his counterpart, number 17, Callaghan. Callaghan had a strong shift the last time he was out here on the ice, giving Miller at least three shots to worry about. And it's trapped up along the front of the UMBC bench, and the Hoyas will win that battle. No peel away with it with Toporoff. Toporoff clearing it inside the Hoyas zone. Or the retriever zone, I beg your pardon. I'm just sitting here astounded by the noise coming from the Hoyas bench. This one gets deflected on. It's in the middle of the air. They score! A fluky bounce up front, and the Georgetown Hoyas have a 2-1 lead with 5.30 left here in the second period. A shot coming, I believe. I don't know if it was Toporoff or if it was Jeff Wong with the shot. And I wonder if that was Wong's first shift, but if it was, he may be getting credit for it. Or No, they're going to point to the initial shot. I guess they're going to indicate that maybe Zimmick had it. But regardless, we'll find out from Jeff Hemmel at the public address here as the Hoyas have shocked Retrievers Nation, gaining a 2-1 lead here at Reisterstown. Another bad turnover by UMBC in the defensive zone. Uh, puck bounces, or the shot came off, bounces off Selbert and into the net. And it looks like Selbert got a penalty also on the play, so UMBC, new rules, uh, penalty still stands, so UMBC on the penalty kill and down, double whammy. So Zimmick from Wong is the call on the Hoya goal. And the penalty to Selbert stays on. So interference is his call. They're going to Hilton Garden in, penalty kill as the Hoyas are ruled offside. 5.06 left here in a second. Retrievers in a tough position here. Georgetown just received some votes in that last ranking period. And of course this weekend the rankings run out on number two as they start up for number three, which is just the month of December for the few games. This, this might actually add some more complications to the already messy chemistry of uh, what's been going on as far as matchups. There comes a chance now with a shot blocked up front. Ryder tried to pull the trigger for the Hoyas. It goes back into the neutral zone. Ryder with it back in his own zone. Clearing it all the way back to Brogan. He's going to send it off over to the far side. And it was Drekovic. Sent over to Ryder along the near wing. Across the retriever's line, trying to dig around Rafferty. He lost the puck in the process, sending it back over to Cadigan. Cadigan trying to work his way around the net. Cadigan getting called from the bench to set up, but Devlin will find it, and he'll send it out in the neutral zone. Not far enough as Drakovic was in the way of that one. And the pass over to Cadigan. Cadigan losing control of the puck to Devlin. Bloom's going to squeeze ahead of Drakovic. Bloom still chasing it down in the far corner of the Hoya zone. He's going to look to kill some time, trying to trap it up along the boards. Losing his footing. Goes down to the ice. It goes underneath them. The Hoyas are lobbying for something as they put their hands up in frustration. But the Hoyas will break out of the retriever zone with 4.05 left here in a second. 35 seconds left on the Hoyas penalty or power play, I beg your pardon. As the shot goes through and it gets deflected just wide. Along the near side boards. Retrievers trying to find it, but it'll be Dan Shea for the, the Hoyas. Going along for Litke. Over for Cadigan along the near side boards. Near circle. Up at the top and over to the half boards. 
Dropping it back for Shea. Back over to Cadigan. Cadigan, blind back pass. Goes up to the blue line to Ryder. Ryder trying to clear it in. Had it slowed up by O'Connor, who is back on the ice. And now walking in. Cadigan takes a shot blocked by Devlin. And it'll be Rafferty trying to move it ahead. Losing control of the puck to Litke. And fed to the front. Cadigan looking to step it home, but Miller got in the way of that one. Bloom on his backhand. Clears it up. Not out. Kept in by Ryder. Ryder along the far blue line. Deflected up top with a long toss on, and Miller will make the save. We're back to five-a-side hockey with 3.17 left here in a second. 2-1 Georgetown on your UMBC Retrievers. More not simple plays being made by UMBC. Rafferty had the puck there. All you got to do is wing it up off the glass, get it out, and say he tries to make a move around the guy, go up on the rush. Yep. UMBC's not going to get back into this game by doing what they've done, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, they got to get back to making the simple plays that they've been successful making throughout the year. And they need a change of philosophy here in order to get back on top of this one. They did have a one nothing lead earlier, and now it's two unanswered goals. Now we have some chatting at the UMBC bench for whatever reason or another. I'm not sure what they were talking about, but... Uh, I think Aaron's asking, a, or Coach Aaron Vogelai is asking a couple of questions. It's sent up by Yosin out all the way down the length of the ice. This one's going to come back. And, well, they're, they're going to wave it off. Well, back linesman was not sure. And he was looking for some help from the other zebras out there on the ice. And said they got caught up in the stampede. Up ahead for Heel. Heel trying to get around Yost. Yost bumping him, but Heel still has the puck. Trying to get it swept away was Sean Walsh. But comes over to the near side blue line, kept in by the Hoyas. And will be swept up by Yost, who leads the puck up ahead for Fadler with a pass over to Dan Durante. Durante trying to make a move around one. And he'll backhand it down low. This goes along the side of the net. Zach Tracy down there to retrieve it, trying to set it up front. Tracy will pick it up along the far circle up to the top of the slot. Winds up, takes a shot, and it actually bounced over his stick in the process as the Hoyas deflected away. And a lead pass here goes out of the reach of Dan Walsh for the Hoyas, and they'll get charged with an icing. A reminder, the Retrievers are sponsored by the Green Turtle, located in Owings Mills, Maryland, and it's at 2 Restaurant Park Drive. They are the official sponsor of the Retrievers Power Play. Any fan that comes here to Rice's Town Sports Flex between now and the end of the year will receive $5 off with the receipt of their coupon or their ticket admission here. You get $5 off of any entree. The expire or the expiration of that offer is December 31st, 2012. Long shot goes wide of Brogan. And the Hoyas are going to find it and lift it out into the neutral zone. They're executing well, putting it up in the air. They really are. Just simple stuff. Uh, it's not fancy. Georgetown's not a fancy team. Uh, they don't pretend to be. And they're making the right plays right now. And blue collar hockey. And we're going to get a call here against the Hoyas as there was a delayed reaction from the referee. He's going to call that. Well, I guess he's going to call it a hit from behind. So going to the penalty box is Dan Walsh for the Georgetown Hoyas. We're going to get our fifth, count it, fifth Green Turtle power play. That's another UMBC power play. That's another Green Turtle going to So with two minutes left here in a second, we're going to have a power play for two minutes or less. Dan Durante to face off. Losing it back, though. Ryder wins it back behind the goal line. Ryder chasing it still on his tail. It was a retriever's player, and that was Thomas Nara. Set up down low in the near corner. Over to Yost along the half boards, up top. Over to Bloom. Bloom trying to play it off his backhand to his forehand. His, his pass on is off wing, if anything. As opposite of his stick handling there as he is a righty trying to receive it. And it comes back to O'Connor along the near side in the neutral zone. Up ahead here into the Hoya zone with a pass over to Bloom. Bloom looking for the shot. And it goes wide of the net as it was deflected away. Thomas Nering battling for it. With getting a little bit of support. And Durante was down there helping out. He'll get the puck along the far side of the Hoya zone with 120 left here in the second. Up top, Bloom looking for a lane. Sending it down low, trying to get the one-time stuff. But it did not go as planned. And there's O'Connor down there waiting for it. And now Shea's going to chase it down, try to kill off some time. O'Connor's going to pinch in there to help out. And it's sent up front. Dan Durante with a shot and a save by Brogan as we have one minute to go here in a second. One minute left on the Green Turtle power play. The fifth opportunity. They're 0 for 4 so far. There comes a long shot through. Trying to find it, John, John Luke, but actually it was Yost that found the puck and took the shot that went over the cage. Along the far side, O'Connor trying to walk to the front, and a shot taken by John Luke goes wide of the net. And reaching out for it is Brogan. He holds on as it's off along the side of the net with 40 seconds left on the power play. 39.7 left here in the second. 
One thing that has been working for UMBC getting offensive opportunities is their power play. They're moving the puck around. Not only because you have the time and space to be able to do it, but right now just not getting that uh, final push, getting that good look to get it back in the back of the net. Rafferty gets it up top. Oh, and that one looked like it went in, but it actually hit the corner of the crossbar and post along the glove side of Brogan. Rebound picked up. Zach Tracy up top to Devlin. Devlin bringing it down to the far corner. Nobody there to pick it up, and it'll be cleared down the length of the ice. Deflected through by Devlin. So we have 20 seconds to play here in a second. Zach Tracy looking to get one last rush in here. Tracy across the blue line near side. Comes and takes a shot. Brogan makes a glove save, and he holds on with 10.3 to go. 2-1 Hoyas on your retrievers here at the Reisterstown Sportsplex. Tomorrow night we have the William Patterson UMBC game here on the cross ice feed. If you can't be here, warm-ups at 5.15. Game time slated for around 5.30, 5.45. Up top to Devlin. Devlin winds up, takes a shot and stick to side by Brogan. Down there to Chase with three seconds to go. Stuffed up along the side of the net, trying to go short side and with a shot taken, that'll do it. It doesn't make its way to Twine, and after two periods of play, the Georgetown University Hoyas hold a 2-1 lead on your UMBC Retrievers. 20 minutes to go, and the Retrievers cannot be happy with that second period performance. Just not enough urgency from UMBC. Saw a little bit there at the last 10, 15 seconds of that power play in the period, but UMBC's got to find something out of park. You could say another gear, but really they haven't even gotten it into a gear. Uh, so figure out what what to do. Got to find some way to turn it up. Need oh. someone in the locker room to step up. There's only so much Aaron can yell and scream. This one's on the players, and they got to find a way to save what they've done or what they did last week with Rowan. Building off of that, they have to put Georgetown into neutral and then maybe put it in fifth gear and just slam it home and redeem themselves here as they are in a hole. So stay tuned. Georgetown 2, UMBC 1. Welcome back everybody to the Reisterstown Sportsplex in Reisterstown, Maryland. I'm David Stearns. Joined with me is Sean Hoppy. After two periods of play, the Georgetown University Hoyas hold a 2-1 to one lead on your UMBC Retrievers. An unranked team is holding it. They're holding it. Now, as we talked before, you know, they got to take it out of park. Put Georgetown into neutral, and then put it in fifth gear. Well, you need to find first. Well, no, you can just third. go right to it and then just kind of hammer it home. It's hard starting there. I know, I know. You might drop a transmission or something. I know. But hey, out a few times. take chances. Drive fast and take chances. One thing of note, uh, Trevor Miller back in there for the third period. Uh, the in initial plan was for him to play 40 minutes and then Drago come in. Uh, but obviously with the game the way it is, I don't think that's the message that uh, Coach wants to send. Uh, I agree. And he was um, he was upset and he had a rah-rah um, shishkamba kind of speech like, go get them guys. You guys really need to pick it up and uh, you need to uh, turn it around. I think that's what he said. I'm just paraphrasing. We're, we're, I think the, the four broadcast version was, uh, okay, guys, we got this. Uh, we need to shore up things, a couple things here and there, uh, get back to what we do, which is the right thing. I'm sure it was much more colorful, animated, yeah. a little more volume. Yeah, and different language, yeah. yeah. That's the basics. Yeah, more or less. So tomorrow night they'll have the number four out of the Northeast come into town. That's William Patterson University. And if they lose this one, tomorrow's going to be even more important. It's a confusing chemistry of scientific notation and some sort of derivatives that you have to use to figure out the rankings for next ranking period, that's for sure. Face-off one all the way back in the Hoya zone. And a nice check there by Zach Tracy. Tracy trying to feed it to the front, trying to find OC. O'Connor having some issues with his skates, as we heard from Coach in the intermission uh, off the broadcast. It's this one's iced down by the Hoyas. So hopefully all is squared away. Hopefully they stoned him well on the skate. There was an issue of uh, proper sharpening. That's what you get when you got a guy who's not professional doing your skates. Uh, nice shot there and a save by Brogan as this one's deflected through. The Hoyas will pick it up, coming back the other way with Allen. But instead it'll be picked off by Sean O'Connor. 
Back over to Fadler. Fadler putting it up along the boards, trying to hook up there with Tracy. Tracy doing a fine job there trying to gun it through, but uh, he had it in there, secured for just a moment. Now the Hoyas are going to come back the other way with Cadigan. Cadigan trying to get it around. Devlin. Devlin pinned him in the boards well. He gets the puck shifted over to Fadler. Fadler putting it into traffic, though, as it's shifted back into the pile behind Miller. And a wraparound chance and a stuff home attempt, and the Retriever's going to get tagged with the penalty. And a slash it is. So 19.06 left here in the third. A not so good position here as the Retrievers are going to go down a man as Colin Devlin looks to be the guilty party. So once again, this is the Cross Ice Feed broadcast crew. David Stearns with Sean Hoppy and Hunter Nicolette on camera. Check us out at crossicefeed.com if you're not here already. Also, give us a like on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, and we love the thumbs up from all of you. Show us how much you appreciate what we do. Whether or not you're a Retrievers fan or a Hoyas fan or maybe even a Patriots fan, we call Potomac Patriots hockey for the EJHL South. Big kill coming up for you, NBC. Uh, don't obviously want to go down two goals here early in the third. Uh, and kill this off, get back to work, use it to build momentum. And it's shorthanded coming back the other way. It's Bloom. Bloom up along the blue line, and O'Connor was a little overzealous and went into the zone. He'll have to tag up. And Bloom will trap it up along the boards and send it back over to O'Connor. And it goes back to Yost, back in his own zone, and it's cleared all the way like the ice by Matt Kelly. And Bloom putting on a little pressure there as Brogan has to play it off over to Shea. Shea along the far half board, leading a pass up ahead for Walsh. Dan Walsh for the Hoyas. Coming across the retriever's line uncontested. Yost is going to challenge him at the last second as his shot goes wide. Steered back by Chad Heal. Yost is going to chase it down as he gets around Litke. Litke gets taken out in a check and a long toss on there to Miller. Miller making an easy save with 110 left on the Hilton Garden in penalty kill. And it's cleared down the length of the ice by Zach Tracy. All right, I beg your pardon. Yeah, that is Tracy. Fixing his flow. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Good flow and good stashes on this team. It is Movember. Check out Movember.com. Figure out how you can participate and raise awareness of prostate cancer. And it's fed back. Turned over. Picked up by Hannock. Hannock backhanding it to the front. And steered aside by the stick of Brogan. Fed up along the far post. You didn't know it was there for the moment, but the Hoyas do find it as Cadigan will pick it up. Brad Cadigan setting up a pass there for Caputo. Back over to Cadigan along the near wing. Fakes a shot, digs around Selbert, coming in, backhands it to the front. Comes up top to the point with a shot that just goes wide. Ronnie Caputo from Manilis, New York, teeing that one up. As this one goes over the stick of Drakovic, the native of Furidal, Sweden. Drakovic being pressured by Tracy, and he pops it over to the far side, kept in by Hannock. Five seconds left on the kill. Tracy. Aggravating the heck out of them Hoyas as they lead out with Cadigan. Cadigan through neutral, across the blue line of the Retriever's territory. Couldn't get around Selbert. Selbert backhands it up along the boards. We're back to five aside hockey. Benrod puts it in deep. And the Retrievers trying to find their footing here as they try to break out of their own zone. Up along the near side for Joyle. Joyle across the blue line and in. And they try to kick it over to Penrod, but instead it'll be the Hoyas that'll clear it out in the neutral zone. Selbert working with Yost, back up along the far side over to Penrod. Penrod couldn't get a handle on it, and the Hoyas will pick it up as it's fed along by Zimic, but that one actually got deflected by a retriever back in the Hoyas zone. There's Drakovic putting up along the near boards into the neutral zone, picked up by Joyle, who retreats back into his own zone, being pressured by Taparuff. The retrievers cleared up into the glass and in. They go down with John Luke chasing. John Luke getting taken out into the boards. Both players arranging their buckets as Penrod comes in there to support. 16-10 left here in the third period, and the Hoyas are chirping for something here. Penrod sending it up top to the point. Yost winds up, takes his shot, and goes into the glass, missing the net over to the far corner. Trying to move it to the front was Sean Walsh, who tees up his shot, gets deflected through traffic. Joyle trying to find it. Joyle trying to move it to the front, and it's sticked away by Brogan. And half boards far side, John Luke getting tied up, and the Hoyas will walk away with it. Up to the blue line, not out, kept in on the backhand from Matt, or Sean Walsh, I beg your pardon. Over and along the near side boards, kept in by Joyle. Joyle, along the hash marks, feeding it to the front. The fight through, they score! Hoppy, you are not the father! 15-31 left here in the third, the Retrievers have tied it at two! Oh, that was a great... We talked uh, throughout the game about the fourth line being the best line for UMBC. Go in there on the four check, 
It was nothing pretty. Joel just threw it to the net. Goes off really the chess logo crest of Jean-Luc. Gives his second goal of the year. Uh, his first one, if I recall, was very similar. Went off the shin pad up against Maryland. So just greasy play. That's what UMBC needed. Now we're tied at two. They can keep going, hopefully build off this, and hopefully break the game open. It'll be nice to see, get some confidence going into tomorrow. Neutral. Assuming we get there. They put Georgetown in neutral. And, oh, they found first gear. That's a start. And now we'll have the face off at center. 15-30 left here in the third. Retrievers just tying it up. La Jolla has enjoyed a short time on the lead with 2-1 lead, and we're all tied up at two as this one is going to be called back in icing as they're going to rule that it was Caputo there first. And we'd like to remind everybody that your retrievers look really good, don't they? Well, if you'd like to wear some gear to support your dogs, check out C22design.com. It's Catch22 Design, the official providers of apparel for your UMBC Retrievers Hockey Club. And up ahead here, here comes Bloom. Bloom setting up for Armstrong. He scores! I've got ants in my pants. It's three to two Retrievers. That was another great simple play by the Retrievers. They've had a few two-on-ones earlier in the game. Went for the shot first. Instead, this time Bloom dishes it off to uh, Armstrong. He did a great job just getting the puck off quick. Got him five hole while coming across. Real smart play, and UMBC is right up quickly, 3-2. They found second gear. <laughs> and timeout Georgetown, just what UMBC wanted here to start the third. Back to the basics is pretty much the mantra we had in that second period, and they finally heard it, and they felt it, and it, the mojo is flowing again on that retriever's bench. Coach Vogelai railing the troops to get them continually moving here as they had two quick goals. One from Jean-Luc, and the second coming just now from number 24, Dapper Dan Armstrong. An underrated uh, part of that play was the puck came out into the neutral zone and Bloom won the battle with the Hoya defenseman to get to the puck to really spring that two on one. If Bloom decides to let that defenseman go, doesn't show the urgency he did to win that puck, that play never happens. So uh, kudos to Bloom and uh, retriever lead. And here comes O'Connor setting up a pass for Tracy, but it went out of his reach. Shea almost had it, but DJ Fadler found it. And it's cleared right back in on Brogan. So Bloom and Devlin getting the assists on that goal. Devlin will pick it back up in his own zone, sending it through traffic. No icing. They're going to rule that the Hoyas had a chance at it. Shea being chased on the boards. DJ Fadler with a nice hit there. Comes along the near side boards. Tracy to the front. Here comes Fadler with a deke on Brogan. Fed to the front with a shot. No, and a great pad saved by Brogan. Wow, he got the pad up just in the nick of time. Ryder coming back the other way for the Hoyas. Cutting around Rafferty. Rafferty couldn't take him out. Fed to the front. The shot. No, I believe it was a toe saved by Miller. And this one comes along the half boards. Hoy is keeping control of it. No, here comes a chance now for DJ Fadler. On a breakaway. Fadler coming in goal. He gets tripped up. Are we going to get a penalty shot on that one? We should. Yes, yes. he's pointing to center. We're going to get a penalty shot for DJ Fadler. Oh, man. This game has turned a bunch of corners. 14-16 left here in the third. Three to two, Retrievers lead. DJ Fadler about to take a penalty shot against Connor Brogan. I hate to dwell on this, but all this momentum that UMBC's got really goes back to their fourth line. They've done it the whole game. Uh, some of the higher skilled forwards, the top or the higher lines, take example from the fourth line, showing going out there, doing some hard work, getting UMBC back in this game. And now a uh, huge opportunity here to hopefully break this game open. Fadler at center, taking the puck across the blue line, forehand, backhand coming in on goal, comes in backhand, he misses the puck on a shot. Brogan didn't have to work much on that one, but it remains three to two. A good effort by Fadler. It looked like he was going over the pad, blocker side was his intended destination on that one, but the puck was just moving too fast for his liking. Well, he went for the uh, leg kick fake shot. It was a good job by uh, Brogan. Yeah. yeah. Brogan uh, not biting on it, stayed with him the whole time. 
Through traffic, Thomas Nering looking for a rebound off of that shot off the backboard from a Andrew Nering point shot. Thomas Nering getting away with it here. Georgetown looking a little frustrated right now. And they're all sorts of crazy right now. And the Bulldogs, or the Hoyas, versus your Retrievers. Retrievers looking a little golden right now. As Fritz is trying to get away from his man as he gets taken down by Caputo. Up top, kept in at the moment by Andrew Nearing with that backhand feed to Thomas Nearing up front. He didn't see it coming. Up along the near boards, kept in by Selberg, who ducks out a check, pinching it all the way down to the far corner. Fritz looking to take out his man along the boards. Trying to work down there to support it to Alec Hannock. Hannock doesn't see where the puck is. Ryder's got it trapped underneath the skate. He's going to step on it. Instead, Hannock's going to find it, though, after he stepped off of it. It'll be picked up by Drakovic. Drakovic along the near side boards up top to Selberg. Selberg. Over to Hannock. Hannock feeding it back door to Nering. Thomas Nering shoots and a save by Brogan. The rebound goes behind Brogan and he falls down. Makes some snow angels as the puck is underneath him. And the referee and the linesman come rushing in to separate what turns out to be nothing. Great vision by Hannock to find Nering back door. Uh, Nering took a little longer than uh, he would like to corral that puck and get a shot off. But good, solid momentum building shifts for UMBC in succession. There's no, there hasn't been a letdown really since uh, that penalty. A shot right off the faceoff gets blocked by the traffic in front. Goes back behind a cage. Daniel Garante finding it there with Armstrong. Armstrong getting the recent retriever goal. And one from Jean-Luc Durante just before that. This one goes down the length of the ice. No icing. Nick Yost is going to pick it up. Back behind Miller. Still with it. Going through the slot and over to the far side wing. And goes out of the reach of Daniel Durante. This one is not going to get ruled in icing. And with pressure from Armstrong, Brogan's going to opt to hold on for the faceoff. 12.46 left here in the third period. 3-2 score retrievers lead. Hey, I sponsor you guys too. Jeez. Up top of the point, faceoff win by the retrievers. And they sent down low behind the goal line. Dan Durante couldn't pick it up there as he got tied up with Shea. Walking away with it is Neustadt. Neustadt couldn't, couldn't clear it out. Here comes Bloom. In on goal with a shot. Brogan to save the rebound. He couldn't stick that one out of the air. He tried to go baseball style, trying to bat that one in. But the Hoyas are going to come back the other way with Dan Walsh. The shot taken off of a pass from Walsh to Litke. And now we got some extracurriculars in the corner. Touch the goaltender. Prepare to pay the price. That was a good job by Yos on that post whistle little skirmish. He didn't make or he didn't go for the big flashy hit. He didn't throw his hands up in his face. He just kind of rubbed him out into the boards. Gave him a little talking to. A lot of uh, players and teams make that mistake of going a little too aggressively defending their goaltender and uh, keeps that five aside hockey. And one back by the retrievers. Devlin sitting around the horn. It'll be along the far wing, through neutral. And the Hoyas will play back into their own zone, but they're going to rule that one in offside. I thought the Hoyas actually bopped that one into their own zone, but regardless, we'll get a stoppage of play. 12-13 left here in the third, 3-2 retrievers. Tomorrow night, William Patterson, Pioneers in town. Look at the Pioneer their way up the rankings in the Northeast. They're at number four right now, but they lost to Rowan University Props last night in overtime, 7-6. So a whole mess of things going on. As Retrievers defeated 4-1 to the Rowan University Profs last weekend here at Reisterstown. Now it's back over for Joyle. Joyle at the top of the near circle trying to feed it through over to John Luke. John Luke couldn't get a shot on that one as it went by him. Over to Rafferty. Over to the near side of Devlin. Devlin winds up, takes a shot. Brogan makes a stick save. Joyle trying to wrap it to the front, but in the way of that one was the referee. And the Hoyas are going to take advantage of that and lead it out into the neutral zone. With a cross ice feed over to Callaghan. And he loses control of it as he has his pocket pick. Coming back the other way is Penrod. Gets checked off the puck and is sent down low. And he'll be sent up along the same far boards. Brogan sending it up along the half boards. Trying to work for it. And it was Rafferty who sent it down to the far corner. And John Luke trying to free it. Penrod overskates it. And the Hoyas are going to look to send it up along the glass and out as Rafferty picks it up just at the red line. Rafferty regaining the zone. Coming in. Uncontested here. Now he's going to feed it to the front. Brogan to save the rebound. It was juicy up front. John Luke couldn't get a stick on it because he was tied up by Sim Allen. And Ryder for the Hoyas. Coming out through the neutral zone. Gets around two. Feeding it to the front. Almost having a chance there to hook up with Allen, but Allen got taken out of the play. Allen chasing for the Hoyas. In shadow by Devlin. And it's kept up at the point and kept in by Shea. Switching places with Cadigan. Cadigan throwing it to the net and it just goes wide. 
Boy, he's looking to step it up front, and Miller makes a save. As that one got steered aside, he'll knock off the net in the process. 10-37 remains here in the third period. 3-2 Retrievers. 37-23 are your shots in favor of the Retrievers. Out of town scoreboard right now, we have St. Joe's up 2-1 on Temple. And a little bit of a surprise there. Wow. The Battle of Philadelphia. And that's all I got. All right, so thanks for the update, Hoppy. Out of town scoreboard sponsored by Cross Ice Feed. That's us. CrossIceFeed.com. If you're not here already, watch it again. And we'll have a hand pass rule and the face off coming here inside of the retriever zone. 10.28 says the clock. And tomorrow night we'll finish things out before the Thanksgiving break. And of course the ranking period for number two will conclude as well. Those should come out somewhere around the 26th, you say? Uh, somewhere around Thanksgiving, uh, maybe a little after because of the holiday. Eventually before that first weekend of December, that's for sure. Yes. Fadler trying to work it away from the Hoyas. He gets a little support there from Tracy. Sent down low, Drakovic with it now, Drakovic. Sending it over to Shea, Shea up along the half boards, not out, kept in by Andrew Neri. Neri fighting for it now. Freeze it, and Fadler's trying to work his way to it. He gets tied up by Shea, no call. And Fadler actually came up high with a stick. That one could have went either way, but he's going to have not to call anything on that play at all. The backhand feed from Walsh. Dan Walsh gets his pocket picked. And it's coming the other way. Zach Tracy with the drop pass to O'Connor. Fed through, trying to find Fadler, and comes up top to Selber with a shot. Oh, it just hits the ankle up front, blocked by Neustadt for the Hoyas as he moves that one out into the neutral zone and hooking up with Heal. Chad Heal coming in into the retriever zone, feeding it to the front, and Miller, I don't know if he got a piece of that one or the defense did, but great work back there regardless. And now it'll be moved ahead with a home run pass, looking for O'Connor. Moved up by Andrew Nairing, but he was a little behind him. It was chipped up by the Hoyas, but now Dan Durante is going to leave it there for Armstrong. Armstrong couldn't pick it up as he had his pocket picked by Callahan. And he'll be sent back to Silbert, back at his own blue line. Over to the near side, Yost, cross ice feed to the far side of the neutral zone. And the retriever is trying desperately to get inside the Hoyas zone. Now here's a chance for Armstrong to get in there. He chases it off in the far corner. Armstrong moving along over to the near corner. He gets held up, no call. And it's up along the half boards near side, pinched in, kept in by Sean Walsh. Armstrong putting on some pressure, forcing the pass up ahead for the Hoyas. Picked up at center by Sean Walsh, who puts it right back into the Hoyas territory in the Retrievers tag up. With 8.37 left here in the third, three to two Retrievers. Definitely a change of pace compared to the first two frames in favor of the Retrievers now. The Hoyas dominated most of the game up until this point. And the Hoyas gaining the Retrievers zone, and they'll go off on a wholesale change. And all three forwards and two defensemen. Yost gaining speed through the neutral zone along the far side. Getting around, getting around two hopefully here as he tries to truck his way through. Dropping the pass back, but he turns it over to Ryder. And it's cleared up into the air and Walsh trying to glove that one down, but Ryder will find it and play it ahead up for Cadigan, who winds up, takes a shot and it just goes wide and comes all the way up to the blue line. And not out. No, now it'll squeeze its way out. Good work there by the captain, Nick Yost. Retrievers are going to get some changes out on the ice with 7.50 to go here in the third. 3-2. to two. Retrievers holding the lead. Looking to get some more offensive activity as Brandon Fritz coming in on goal. On his forehand to his backhand, trying to release it. And now a chance, and Thomas Nairn couldn't find it as the net was knocked off in the process. Fritz held on to it a little too long, but he found Nairn trailing, but he just couldn't hook up. That was a great play by Dan Durante there at the half boards. Uh, I don't know if you saw there on the uh, film, but he went between the legs with a little tip pass on to Fritz, who came through with speed. Fritz, another one of the very fast players that UMBC has, uh, able to go around Georgetown defenseman, couldn't get a real shot off. Uh, it was a little too close in on goaltender. Uh, but another good shift for UMBC, and let's keep it going. Brandon Fritz winning that faceoff for the Retrievers, but it'll be picked up by the Hoyas and sent out in the neutral zone. Hoyas, it's Cadigan, over to Ryder. Ryder takes a shot, Miller to save the rebound, sticked up in the air and gloved down and played to himself as Brandon Fritz plays it off from the far corner of the retriever zone. And there's Rafferty trying to support in there. Rafferty will find it over to Fritz. Fritz with the lead pass to Nairing. Thomas Nairing had trouble with it and it's delayed offside against the retrievers as they tag up. But regardless, the Hoyas will come out with Caputo. Sending it off into the far near corner of the retriever zone. Colin Devlin back to Chase Cadigan. 
easing away from it with seven minutes to play here in the third. 3-2 retriever lead. Cadigan will give pressure now. Forces Colin Devlin to make a move. Feeds it up along the near boards. And Fritz pushing it out. And Fritz getting a push and a shove there from Caputo. But he'll have to go off on a change instead. Cadigan across the line with a little toe drag and kick from skate to stick. But he'll take it off on the far corner as he gets checked on the boards. Hoyas bringing it up to the point with a shot from Zed uh, Drakovic going wide. Kept in along the near boards by Caputo. Ronnie Caputo putting it in deep. The Retrievers looking for Zach Tracy, popping it behind the back, trying to find Thomas Nearing, but instead it'll be the Hoyas that'll find it. And a lot of possession change here inside the Retriever zone as Alec Hannock will find it and send it up high into the air and down the length of the ice, and this one will come back and racing slowly. Slowly made its way across the line. 6-10 to go here in the third period. 3-2 score. Cross ice feed. Check us out, crossicefeed.com or on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, Cross Ice Feed. Give us a thumbs up. Tell us you like us. Give us a thumbs up right on our wall or send us complaints. Complain about this guy to my left. Yeah, go right ahead. Um, um, just fill in. Oh, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about Nicolette. No. Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Georgetown's able to stem UMBC's momentum here pretty effectively. A lot of it goes to Brogan, made a big save on OC, kind of throwing his pad up in the air. Uh, penalty kill, or the pa penalty shot stop on Fadler, even though it wasn't really a stop. Uh, there's a couple other big saves that he's made here to keep Georgetown in the game uh, as they go on late, and they're still probably going away getting chances. There's a chance now for the Hoyas. It goes right in on Miller. Miller making a save, and the rebound gets kicked all the way out in the neutral zone and down into the Hoyas zone with 5.40 to play here in the third period. Shea back for the Hoyas in his own zone, leading up along the near boards past O'Connor. Out into the neutral zone it goes, and it'll be kept in by O'Connor, actually. It's tied up along the blue line. And Georgetown is looking for a penalty, I believe, on that one, but uh, we're going we're gonna to let that one slide. As they enter the Hoy or the retriever zone, the Hoyas are deemed offside. 5.24 left here in the third. And going off the ice unhappy was Sean O'Connor. A little bit of a rough shift for him on that one. I'd like to remind everyone, tomorrow, William Patterson, Pioneers, back here in this building. As the retrievers have had a little bit of uh, time with them in the years past. Hopefully... Uh, they can stymie that this time around and get a win against the Pioneers. So tune in here, 5.15 warm-ups and 5.30, 5.45 game time. And Travis Joyo with it now, far corner, trying to feed it to the front, trying to find John Luke, but it goes wide. Along the half boards near side, Penrod putting it in deep. Penrod will find it as the Hoyas try to move it up along the boards. Penrod putting it in deep, back behind the cage, looking for someone up front, feeding it to the front, looking for Joyo, but Penrod's going to find it instead. So he sends it up top to Andrew Nearing, back over to Penrod. Penrod trying to throw it to the front, comes over to the half boards near side. Travis Joyo trying to get there first, but he gets bumped. And he'll try to trap it up along the boards with Wong. Wong trying to clear it there for the second, but the Retrievers are going to sweep it back with John Luke putting it into the near corner. 440 left here in the third, 3 2 dogs. The Retrievers' dogs, that is. And he cleared up. No, not out. He actually hits a few bodies in a clearing attempt from Zinnick. And now it's going to finally go over to the near side and chipped out and into the scorekeeper's bench and almost clocks public address announcer and scorekeeper and timekeeper Jeff Hemmett. Stop at your play here at 428. Faceoff will be in the neutral zone just in front of the Georgetown bench. Dan Durante will take the face off against Ryder. Ryder wins it back over to Drakovic. Drakovic sending it over to the opposite side of Shea. Still inside their own zone. Now they'll clear it out. And it'll be ping pong back over to the Hoyas blue line. And lost control of it was Bloom. Bloom bumping Cadigan off the puck. The puck's between the legs of, I believe that's Kelly. Now picking it up and moving it through neutral is Dan Durante. Durante across the blue line with a drop pass behind the back. Dan Armstrong will find it. No, nope, maybe not. Everyone's going to overskate it. And then Matt Bloom's going to support it, but not deep enough as it's popped out over the blue line by Shea. And Yost will find it back at his own blue line, setting it up for Dan Durante. Durante across the line, near side. Someone's without a mouthpiece. I hope they have dental insurance. 3.45 left on the clock. Ryder deking around Armstrong, taking along the far wing, up through the neutral zone, across into the retriever's territory. Feeding it to the front, and Miller interrupted that one. The Hoyas trying to drop pass it with Cadigan, but he tried to hook up with Caputo, but it was out of his reach, and it was out in the neutral zone. 
Cadigan will find it though across the retriever's line and he gets beat off the puck by Brandon Fritz. Nick Yos will find it and send it over to the near side boards to Thomas Nearing who centers it over for Fritz coming in on goal. Fritz coming in on the backhand forehand shot a save and a rebound taken by Dan Durante. Goes wide of the net and out in the neutral zone. Nick Yos will play it. 3.05 to play here in the third. 3-2 dogs lead. And the Hoyas bench are all on their feet. They're looking to tie this one back up. They did have a 2-1 lead going into this third frame. And the Retrievers popped up two on the Hoyas. There's John Luke and Armstrong. Thomas Nering couldn't get that pass out of his reach. Goes over inside the Hoya zone as Shea puts it up along the near boards. And it'll be turned over and picked up by Hannock. Well, Hannock gets his pocket picked by Shea. Shea trying to walk, work his way in. Nice hit there by Thomas Nering as he takes out heel. Across the far blue line and in. Ben Rafferty trying to get it in deep. Couldn't get it around Drakovic. It'll be Shea with it in the high slot in his own zone. Turned over. Went off a body there. And DJ Fadler couldn't get a hold of it. And now coming back the other way, it'll be Shea. Shea walking and taking a shot and a nice block there by Devlin. And picking up that shot rebound is Zach Tracy who sends it cross ice. No icing here. I don't know why he even threw up his arm. It wasn't even going anywhere near an icing. And coming back the other way, it'll be Dan Walsh for the Hoyas. He has his pocket pick. And now trying to squeeze his way through center is Zach Tracy. But he puts the puck a little out of his reach. And the Hoyas will pick it up back in their own zone. 150 left here in the third. 3-2 Retrievers lead. And trying to work their way through traffic is Ryder. And the Hoyas. Ryder with a backhand pass goes wide of the net over the half boards near side. O'Connor trying to pick the pocket of Sim Allen. Off in the corner it goes. Rafferty trying to work for it. Rafferty taking his man of the boards. Ryder will find it with a backhand pass. It gets picked up by the Retrievers. Dangerously played up along the side of the net by Zach Tracy. But instead it will be picked up by Fadler who tries to deke around his man. Fadler trying to come inside the Hoyas zone. And Hoy or, I beg your pardon, Fadler trying to get the pass over to Devlin. And now back to play Selbert. Working with Bloom back on the D to cover for Selbert, who was trying, or I beg your pardon, Devlin, who was trying to rush into the play. 110 to go here in the third. 3 2 dogs. Bloom coming in one on one. Bloom to the outside. Walks in, takes his shot. Brannigan make the, or Brogan makes the save, I beg your pardon. One minute to play. Here comes another chance. Bloom, backdoor stuff there for Dan Durante. He couldn't get a shot off and couldn't get it in his wheelhouse. 50 seconds to play. Hoyas looking to tie this one up at the last minute. It's Dan Armstrong putting it into the far corner of the Hoyas zone with 45 ticks left. Dan Durante putting out pressure on Shea. The Hoyas seem to be retreating back in their own zone deep here. They're trying to pull the tender. Brogan's going to skate up with the play. The Hoyas take it through center. Deflected through. No icing. Brogan's going to head to the bench. 30 seconds to go here. So it comes down to Durante. Durante looking for the open net. Leading it ahead here for Armstrong. Armstrong clearing it on goal and he just misses. Goes off in the near corner with 20 seconds to play. Retrievers holding on to the one goal lead. Hoyas looking to tie. Back deep inside their own zone. Cadigan. Cadigan being shadowed by Armstrong. Cadigan will pull away with it. Coming up through neutral with 10 seconds to go. And the Hoyas won't be able to get that last second shot. And trying to ice it down was Rafferty. But getting in the way of it was Heel. Bradigan looking for the front. And a chance there. And it misses everybody. And that'll do it. The Retrievers walk away victors in this one. 3-2. to two. A tighter score than we thought. But regardless, it's a win for your dogs. Tomorrow night, we'll take on a tougher opponent, William Patterson University Pioneers. So the final shots, 38 to 26 in favor of your Retrievers, and the score, of course, in the favor of the Retrievers as well. Three to two, it's your final. It's been Cross Ice Feed. Check us out, crossicefeed.com. And for those of you that are in town, here, Reisterstown, Sportsplex, 515, warm-ups, 530, game time, William Patterson. Hoppy, final thoughts. Uh, definitely not what UMBC was looking for today, uh, but they gutted it out, got... I wouldn't call it a big win, but it is a big win coming back uh, for the third period deficit, uh, keeping at least the winning momentum from Rowan, uh, not necessarily what they lo were looking for result-wise. Uh, a lot of things to think about and work on before tomorrow, but UMBC's shown a history of playing one bad and one good, so hopefully uh, that good one comes up tomorrow. And this one, we're, we're going to classify as the bad. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not great. All right. With that being said, for my production team, Sean Hoppy and camera man Hunter Nicolette, I'm David Stearns saying good night, everybody. Retrievers win 3-2 to two against the Hoyas. 
Tomorrow night, William Patterson comes to town. And as always, don't stop believing.